Hi everyone, my name is Hassain and in this video we are going to talk about Priority Queue Pattern. Priority Queue Pattern comes under two categories of cloud design patterns, messaging category and performance efficiency. And Priority Queue Pattern is about prioritizing requests being sent to the consumer or a certain service so that we get to process higher priority messages before than the lower priority messages. And we are going to see this in more details in this video. Now let's see other related patterns to priority queue pattern. Competing consumer pattern and throttling pattern. Hopefully we are going to make a video about these two patterns in future. Now let's go ahead and see how can we implement this pattern. Let's assume that we have an application and we have a consumer. You may call the application producer or publisher or any kind of application that produces or publish events or messages that the consumer is interested to process. Then we'll have a message queue that could be implemented using Azure Service Bus. And from one side, the application or publisher is going to send the messages or events to the message queue. And from the other side, the consumer is going to receive the messages from the message queue to process it. And of course, we will have many messages in the message queue waiting for the consumer to process them as well. Now, what if we have a high priority message that needs to be delivered to the consumer right away? And we want to give this message high priority to be higher than any other message in the queue. How can we achieve this? Usually message queues process messages based on order, first in, first out. However, the ordering of the messages in the message queue is not a 100% guarantee until you are using a FIFO queues, for example, in AWS. But generally speaking, messages are processed in orders in the message queues. So according to this, when we have a high priority message and we placed in the message queue, it's going to stay there for a bit of time until the consumer is free and available to process the high priority message. And this is exactly the challenge that the priority queue pattern is trying to solve. How can we allow the consumer to process this high priority message before any other messages in the queue that has been already sent before? Now, after we have addressed the problem, let's see how can we use the priority queue pattern to solve this problem. Most message queue providers support something called priority queues. And it's something that allows you to specify a priority for your messages. And based on that priority, the message queue is going to order the messages in the message queue based on the priority of a specified in your application. And Priority Queue feature is already supported by many message queue providers for Azure Service Bus or AWS SQS. And according to this, the messages are going to be placed in the message queue based on their priority. So our message queue is going to have the higher priority messages at the top. So the consumer get to process these messages before other messages in the queue. Then it's going to be followed by medium priority messages, then followed by low priority messages. Now, when we get a new high priority message, then the message queue is going to place this high priority message before other lower priority messages that are already in the queue. And this is to ensure that the consumer gets to process higher priority messages before other messages in the queue and once it's been sent or published by the producer application. And as I said before, the priority queue feature is already supported by most message queue providers. Now, what if your message queue provider doesn't support priority queue? What can you do in this situation? Well, if your message queue provider doesn't support priority queues, then what you can do in this situation is to implement or create a dedicated queue for each priority you have in your solution. So we are going to have three queues, high priority queues, the red queue, medium priority queue, the green queue, and then low priority queue, the blue queue. Then the application is going to send the high priority messages to the red queue, 
and the medium priority messages to the green queue, and then the low priority messages to the blue queue. And then you can have one or more consumers to process messages from the high priority queue, and you can have less number of consumers to process messages from the medium priority queue, and we can have one consumer to process messages from the low priority queue. So based on that, we have resolved the challenge that if your message queue provider doesn't support priority queues, and according to this, you might get concerned about the number of consumers we will have to create in this architecture. As a minimum, we will have to have three consumers based on the number of the queues we have in our architecture. And this might be too much for your architecture or your solution. And what you can do in this situation is to put all of the consumers in a pool. And instead of having a dedicated consumer to pull messages from a certain message queue, you are going to make all consumers pulling messages from all message queues at the same time, but with a condition. The condition here is that you cannot process messages from the low priority queue or medium priority queue as long as there are messages in the high priority queue. In other words, you have to process all messages in the high priority queue first before you process other medium priority queue and low priority queue. And if you follow that approach, you can have identical consumers to process all messages from your queues. And then you can scale them up and down as much as you like based on your requirements and workload. There is something I want you to think of. If you are receiving an overwhelming number of high priority messages, what would be the case for a low priority messages? That's going to be in the queue. One of the cons of this architecture is that the low priority messages are going to stuck in the low priority queue until all messages, all high priority messages are going to be processed. So it's a critical decision that you need to make. Are you going to happy with the low priority messages being stuck until all higher priority messages are processed? Or you want to process low priority messages at a slower pace while you are processing the high priority messages? This is very important decision that you need to make if you are going to follow this variation of the priority queue pattern implementation. Now let's talk about some considerations you need to keep in mind when you use priority queue pattern. And first of all is priorities. You need to define how many priorities are going to be implemented in your system and you need to communicate them with your stakeholders so you can have a common understanding about what different priorities are going to be handled by your system. Also, you need to decide if the high priority messages must be processed before any lower priority messages. As you see in front of you here, in this architecture, high priority messages are going to be processed before medium priority and low priority. And in some situations, you need to follow or implement this approach to pause the processing of medium priority and low priority until you fully process all high priority messages. Also, you need to ensure that the higher priority messages are going to be processed first by the consumers in the multiple queue approach. Getting back to the diagram here, we need to ensure here when we pull a messages from the queue that there is no more messages in the high priority queue before we get to process medium messages or low priority messages. Also, in some situations, you might want the low priority messages to be processed at the same time while you are processing the high priority messages. In this case, you have to have a dedicated consumer to the low priority queue, as we said before. As you see in this diagram here, we have a dedicated consumer to process low priority messages at a slower pace comparing to the other higher priority messages. Also, you need to set up monitoring for your queues to be able to tell how many messages in the queue and how quick different consumers are processing these messages. Also, additional costs might be included while you are continuously checking your message queues for new messages. 
and you need to allow your solution to dynamically scale up and down based on the workload. Now let's see when you should use this pattern. If your system has multiple tasks with different priorities, or when you have a different users or tenants that should be served with different priorities. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the priority queue pattern is about. How we implement it, what are the different variations of the priority queue pattern, what you should do if your message queue provider doesn't support priority queue feature, and what are the different considerations you need to keep in mind when you use this pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.